Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Respected scholars, accomplished graduates, and special guests, IOU is very honored to hold today's ceremony to recognize the amazing achievement of our 2015 graduating class. We feel so blessed and excited to witness 98 students from 33 different countries receive their diplomas and begin a path of departing knowledge and continuing to seek it as well, inshallah. We acknowledge the immense effort and sacrifice that so many of you made to reach this eagerly anticipated moment on your journey for Islamic knowledge, and we are so pleased that you chose IOU to guide you on this path. Our founder and chancellor, Dr. Bilal Phillips, is a Jamaican-Canadian Islamic scholar who converted to Islam. Shortly after his reversion to Islam, he embarked on a spiritual academic journey to the other side of the world, seeking Islamic knowledge in Saudi Arabia, where he completed his bachelor's degree in Islamic studies in Medina, and his master's in Islamic theology in Riyadh, and later a PhD at the prestigious University of Wales in Islamic theology. Dr. Bilal Phillips has written, translated, and commented on over 50 published books on various Islamic topics. He has also edited and published the 56th book Iman reading series for children and presented Islamic programs for a number of years on Riyadh Channel 2 TV, Sharjah TV for 10 years, as well as Peace TV, Buddha TV, Islam Channel, and The Dean Show with Eddie. In March 2010, he launched for the first time in history an accredited tuition-free bachelor's in Islamic studies at the Islamic Online University. This incredible effort earned his ranking recently in a Jordanian publication as one of the 500 most influential Muslims. He has selflessly dedicated himself to changing the nation through education since he founded IOU, this noble effort of affordable easily accessible, accredited education online. Dr. Bilal Phillips will now address you briefly to express his sincere congratulations and appreciation for your achievements. So we welcome Dr. Bilal Phillips. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'd like to welcome you all a second time after our sister Yasmin has already uh, welcomed you. Uh, on behalf of the uh, faculty, the administration of the Islamic Online University, we'd like to welcome you to this occasion, the second uh, convocation, graduation of students from the Islamic Online University. And as you know, uh, this is a landmark uh, event in the life of any university, and in the Islamic Online University in particular, uh, a young university which, in spite of its youth, uh, has reached um, over 230,000 students registered, uh, as well as students from the most diverse number of countries of any university in the world. We have over students from over 228 different countries. A great achievement uh, by the wonder of the internet. Alhamdulillah. And this uh, convocation, graduation, is the second year of students who have now entered into a variety of new disciplines, taking the Islamic Online University from its Islamic roots to Islamized uh, disciplines, of major importance in today's modern world. The details of these, of course, you will no doubt either be aware or you can find on the website, but we have entered into areas 
of, of uh, education, economics, information technology, etc. and beyond. And alhamdulillah, we hope to continue to expand uh, the horizons of this university with each coming year. With regards to its courses offered, as well as with regards to the teaching staff that we continue to gather from all over the Muslim world. Those who have a consciousness of Islam and a realization of the need to share their knowledge and their specialization with the world, with the Ummah. And this is among the unique features in that virtually every professor who is hired is vetted by myself and other members of staff to ensure that we have people dedicated to the goals of this university, changing the nation through Islamic or Islamized education. This goal can only be achieved if those who convey the knowledge are themselves uh, Islamically oriented, understanding that teaching in the Islamic online university is ibadah. We're not here merely for earning sustenance, um, basic needs, financial. No, we are here together to carry what is useful of the knowledge available in the world today to the Ummah at the most affordable possible cost and in the easiest possible way. So with those goals, Alhamdulillah, we have uh, a number of graduates increasing with every semester now from 2014 when our first batch graduated uh, but we have done uh, the ceremony after every two batches since two semesters make a year you know, to cut down on the number of convocations we keep it on an annual basis and this is the second or fourth action, the first fourth semester of students who are graduating. And the numbers are increasing with each semester. As the numbers of the students in the university continues to increase steadily. But alhamdulillah, uh, what is of course of most importance is that our graduating students realize, understand their responsibility. As graduates from Islamic Online University, graduates from Islamic or Islamized programs of education means that they have been given an advantage which so many others in the world do not have. They have graduated from Islamic studies uh, in a way most people don't have the opportunity to access. But also, we do have some who are already, who are joining us, who are graduating on the certificate level in psychology. Psychology taught from an Islamic perspective. This is a new groundbreaking uh, area that we, the Islamic Online University, uh, are entering. So, having said that, just I would like to remind you graduates 
most of you present are graduates and their supporters and others who hope to graduate soon, that you, being mainly from the Bachelors of Arts in Islamic Studies, or the bridge for the Masters of Arts in Islamic Studies, both of you have a responsibility of carrying the knowledge which you have accessed, which you have accumulated, you have gathered, which you should have applied to varying degrees as it was an obligation for all of our students to engage in community activity. So many hours every semester they have to utilize some of their time for the Ummah, for benefiting the Ummah. You know that you are graduating and now you are entering a new phase in your life, a new realm, where you have what so many others don't have, what so many others need. You have been chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to carry the message of Islam to the Ummah. That is your responsibility. We have done our part in carrying that message to you. And now it is your responsibility to carry it on to the Ummah, to your family members, to your community, to your society, to your country, to the world. It is your responsibility. As the Prophet, may God's peace and blessing be upon him, had said, Balligo anni walau ayah. Convey whatever you have learned from me, even though it may be only a single verse from the Quran. It is our job to carry this on. And we have been blessed in that the knowledge that we're carrying makes it easy for us to worship Allah while we work. This is the goal, to be able to make our working hours ibadah. For those of you graduating from the Bachelors of Arts in Islamic Studies, it's easy. It's been made easy for you. If you utilize this knowledge in your work, whether as Islamic Studies teachers or advisors or counselors, administrators, etc. Or, for those of you that have your other areas of discipline that you are working in, and the Islamic Studies degree is additional, that additional knowledge now should guide you further in the work that you are doing in order that you may worship while you work. So that your daily job becomes worship of Allah. This is what you have been blessed with. And I hope that you will be thankful to Allah for having given you this unique opportunity to be a guide, a light, a direction, a lighthouse in the darkness of ignorance that exists all over the world. That light of Islam, the light of Allah, is now our light. May Allah perfect that light in such a way that it enlightens ourselves and makes us better people, better Muslims, better believers, parents, relatives, neighbors, and as well, better worshippers of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And with those brief words, I would like to launch 
our convocation graduation ceremonies and turn the floor back over to our sister, our dearly beloved sister, Yasmin Roland. Take it away, Yasmin. Thank you, Jazakallahu Karen and Sheikh uh, Abu Amina Bilal Phillips for this amazing address to the students. I'm sure they're so pleased to hear your motivational talk today. Now, I would like to introduce Sheikh Abdrahim Green, who will address you next. Abdrahim Green embraced Islam over 20 years ago and since that time has been active in the field of da'wah. Abdrahim was educated in a Christian monastic school and although he held strong Christian principles, he dabbled with other religions and this continual quest led to him finding, finding the true meaning of life in Islam. Abdrahim spent many years at the Speaker's Corner in Hyde Park, London, where he made his name as an inspirational orator. He is also an acclaimed international speaker at universities, masajid, and conferences, such as the Peace Conference in Mumbai. He is a regular on Peace TV, and many of his lectures are widely viewed online. Abdrahim is a founding member and chairman of the IERA. Please welcome Sheikh Green. First of all, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to everybody. Uh, we begin by praising Allah and uh, we ask Allah to send His uh, peace and blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad, his family and followers, whomsoever Allah guides, no one can misguide, and whomsoever Allah leaves to go astray, no one can guide. And I testify that Allah alone is worthy of worship and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. I'm sure that uh, most of you, if not all of you, have been inspired and motivated to embark upon this path of seeking knowledge, at least in part by what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that whoever takes a path of seeking knowledge, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make easy for them the path to paradise. And also, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, that the angels spread their wings for those people who are on a path of seeking knowledge. What is really important to remember, my dear brothers and sisters, may Allah shower His mercy and blessings and forgiveness upon you, is that... I'm very sorry about that. Um, is that... Um, is that... Knowledge is thought for a reason. There is a reason that you seek knowledge. And the reason that you seek knowledge is to turn it into action. One of the things that we have to be very careful about is not becoming like those people about whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, that they are like donkeys with bits and you see, um, this, the example of this humility that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given in the Qur'an um, is, is of something, a creature that carries knowledge. You see, the donkey with books on its back is carrying knowledge, a lot of knowledge and a lot of information. But that knowledge and that information is not benefiting that donkey. In fact, brothers and sisters, that knowledge becomes a burden. It becomes a burden. It only weighs down that creature more. And this is something very important, that we, we shouldn't be like that. We sh you know, knowledge is not sought just so we are carrying information in our head. The purpose of seeking knowledge, the purpose of seeking knowledge is to translate that knowledge into action. And primarily, brothers and sisters, what is, why are we here? What is the purpose of life? The purpose of life, I, I, I that the purpose of life is to worship Allah. But as Abdullah ibn Abbas said, that worshipping Allah means knowing Allah. And this is the reality, brothers and sisters. When we seek knowledge, ultimately, religion is there so that we can know our Lord. So we can know who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we can understand more about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and know more about Allah. So this is very important to understand. 
And that the way that we do that, the, 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 the means through which we do that, is through worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By worshipping Allah, we know Him. And how can we worship Allah? We can only know how to worship Allah by seeking knowledge. And seeking knowledge in this case, brothers and sisters, is through studying. Like, that's what you have been doing for however many years. You have been studying, you have been learning. Insha'Allah, you have been memorizing. But what is really important is that what you have learned, what you have studied, what you have memorized, the first thing you need to do is act upon it yourself. You need to translate that knowledge into action in your own life. One of the great benefits of this is that when you translate knowledge into action, when you actually begin to implement that information in your life, it solidifies that knowledge and that information in your mind. So this is very, very key, brothers and sisters, please. Knowledge is so that you should transform it into action in your life first and foremost before anything else. Then, once you have implemented and acted upon that knowledge, it is also upon you to teach that knowledge to others. That is the responsibility that you have. Now, I want to give a you know, a brief word of warning about teaching knowledge and about conveying knowledge. Although it's something you should do and you must do, you have to bear in mind something very important, is that there is a danger when you have a little bit of knowledge of becoming arrogant. And this is something the ulama, the scholars, have pointed out. They've mentioned the three levels of knowledge. And when a person begins to seek knowledge, when they get a little bit of knowledge, as the saying goes, a little bit of knowledge is a dangerous thing. When people get that little bit of knowledge, very often they think they know everything. And this is actually the first hand span or the first part of knowledge. And, and the condition of the Muslim Ummah today, brothers and sisters, may Allah have mercy upon you, is that ignorance is so widespread. You really don't have to know uh, very much at all to put yourself head and shoulders above the vast majority of people in terms of knowledge. I mean, ignorance is so widespread. I mean, perhaps even uh, just reading the Quran once in a language that you've understood and reading a few hadith already puts you in a category of 2%, which uh, you know, the vast majority of people have not even done that. Let alone what you have accomplished, mashallah, tabarakallah, actually taking a degree and getting a degree uh, in, in, in Islamic knowledge. So, but don't be fooled, brothers and sisters, because this is the example of the land of the blind. When everyone is blind, if you just have one eye, you are the king. And this is the condition. This is how it is. Knowledge is very weak in this day and age. So just because you understand a little doesn't mean that you really have reached a good depth and a good understanding of knowledge. So although in some ways almost it's inevitable that you'll go through that stage, but just me warning you about it and just you being able to remind yourself that just because I have a little bit of knowledge, just because I have a degree, just because I've spent three years, it doesn't mean I know that much. And the second thing, and, and please, brothers and sisters, don't think that because you have this degree, it's the end. It is only the beginning of your search and your seeking knowledge. The second level that you reach is the more you study, the more you begin to realize how little you know. So that's the second level, is it dawns upon you that, in fact, you don't really know that much at all. And finally, ultimately, when you reach a higher state of knowledge, you begin to realize that actually you know virtually nothing. And that's the sort of paradox of the more knowledge you have, the more you realize how little you know. So brothers and sisters, what is really important and what I would like to remind you of as students of knowledge, as people, mashallah, who have embarked upon this path, is to remember the good manners. And I would like to point out as an example um, the, 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 the chairman, the, 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 the dean of this faculty, of uh, the founder of this amazing institution, 
uh, Dr. Vidal Phillips, and he is someone who I have learned from for 27 years. Um, the book that he wrote, uh, the, the Fundamentals of Islamic Monotheism, if that's the only thing Dr. Bilal had ever done, it would have been significant. Um, and and that, that book alone was a game changer for many of us, alhamdulillah. But Dr. Bilal has gone on to do great things. And yet in all the years that I have been learning from Dr. Bilal, one of the beautiful qualities, of many qualities, but one of the beautiful qualities is his humility. Um, it's sometimes amazing that when you talk to Dr. Bilal and when you're sharing something with him, it's almost he behaves as if he's the student and you're teaching him. This is the attention that he gives you. This is the humility you feel that from him, even though in his knowledge and his experience and his wisdom, he is far, far ahead. And this is a beautiful characteristic. And it's this type of humility, brothers and sisters, this type of humbleness you know, that is very, very important for us, inshallah, to have as students of knowledge, as seekers of knowledge, uh, as, 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 as teachers of knowledge. So, um, I'm, I'm really, really happy. Uh, uh, you know, I, I mentioned as the honored guest, but I, I'm honored because I'm the one who's honored to be asked to actually, uh, present something to this amazing institution, the, the Islamic Online University. Um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you who have partaken in this and especially uh, Dr. Bilal Phillips and all the volunteers and all the staff who have made this uh, amazing uh, institution happen. Uh, so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you in this life and the dunya and may Allah write it all in your book of good deeds and I do pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides and motivates you all to achieve great and marvelous things for the sake of Allah. Uh, once again, Jazakallah khair for giving your time. May Allah bless all of you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Jazakallah khair for just our graduates today. And we are so proud to have Dr. Bilal Phillips as our chancellor and founder. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless him and preserve him. Sheikh Kamil Ahmed. The next one to address us today holds a bachelor's degree in Sharia from the Islamic University of Medina, Saudi Arabia, and a postgraduate diploma in Da'wah from the Faculty of Da'wah and Usuluddin. Currently, he is pursuing a master's degree in Aqida from Qasim University. He is also one of our esteemed faculty members and a professor and TA for Aqida in our master's program. Please welcome Sheikh Ahmed. الحمد لله الذي بنعمته تتم الصالحات وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا نبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى والآيات البينات صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن سلك سبيله وسار على نهجه إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فالسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. I start by asking Allah سبحانه وتعالى to bless this event and reward all those who made it possible. Secondly, I ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to accept the efforts of all those who made this institution to become what it has become today. Without a doubt. After, you know, the, the, the blessings and the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is through timeless efforts of, you know, several brothers and sisters, volunteers, staff, administration, who have brought this institution to where it has come to, at the head of them, Dr. Bilal Phillips. And so, you know, it began in 2007 with only 1,500 students. And today Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed the IOU with a student body of, you know, close to 200,000 students from, you know, over 228 countries around the world. Finally, I congratulate all of you, all of you students who have graduated. By Allah's tawfiq, 
by his grace alone from one of the several programs that I, that IOU has offered, whether it be the Islamic Studies program, the um, Bridge to the Master's program, the Psychology program, whatever it be, I congratulate each and every one of you on behalf of the faculty of IOU. This event should be one that reminds each and every single one of us of Allah's blessings upon us for indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been kind to each and every single one of us while the reality is that we have not worshipped him the way he truly wants us to worship him and he has honored us while we persist in our shortcomings towards him and so there's no doubt that having reached this stage in you know your your pursuit for Islamic knowledge there's no doubt that this is one of the greatest blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can bestow upon any human being. For the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that whenever Allah desires good for a person, He grants him, He grants him understanding of the deen. And so if you have, out of all these years, gained some kind of correct understanding of the deen, then it is because Allah has been kind to you. It is because Allah desired that good for you. And, you know, vice versa. If Allah has, you know, if there are people who have not been given that correct understanding of the deen, then know that that is a sign that Allah has not wished good for that person. And so, I just want to share a few words of advice for each and every single one of you. Some of which, uh, you know, Dr. Bilal has already mentioned and Sheikh Abdul Rahim Green has already mentioned. But to just reiterate, you know, uh, these points as, you know, uh, you are now graduating and about to move on. Uh, the first piece of advice that I have is do not neglect Allah's praise and gratitude. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has linked an increase in anything with with a shukr, with gratitude. وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَذِيدَنَّكُمْ And remember, when your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala proclaimed that if you are grateful, I will surely increase you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala linked barakah in that which He provides the blessings with remembrance of Him. فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ وَاشْكُرُونِي وَلَا تَذْكُرُونَ So remember me. And, and, and I will remember you and be grateful to me and do not be ungrateful to me. And so whoever remembers the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah has proclaimed that he will give him more. And so if you thank Allah and you remember this blessing of knowledge that he has given you, then it will be a means of being granted more of this knowledge. And Allah puts barakah in uh, this knowledge such that you benefit from it yourself, and you benefit others from it. Second piece of advice is something that, you know, we have always been hearing, especially in the beginning uh, of our pursuit for Islamic knowledge. And that is ikhlas al sincerity of intention. And so as they say, مَا كَانَ لِلَّهِ دَامَ وَاتَّصَلْ وَمَا كَانَ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ انْقَطَعَ وَانْقَصَلْ that whatever was for Allah, for His sake, it will continue. And whatever was for other than Allah, it will discontinue. And so that's the reality. If your intention from the beginning was that you're doing this for the sake of Allah, for Allah's pleasure, to gain beneficial knowledge for yourself and to impart it to others, then by Allah's will, this will continue. This knowledge, it will remain with you and the barakah of it will continue. But if it was for other than Allah, for a worldly purpose, then the reality is that it will discontinue. And so today on this day, we stand here to renew our intentions. And so this intention is something that we focus on in the beginning as well as in the middle of our actions. We need to constantly be reminding ourselves of our intention. That's why, uh, as you all know, uh, the Salaf, they used to say that this was one of the most difficult things 
that they used to try to overcome this intention to make sure that their intention for anything that they're doing is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not for other than Him. The third piece of advice that I wanted to share with all of you is to adorn this knowledge with action. To adorn it with action. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored you with this knowledge. So now adorn it, beautify it with, with action. Knowledge calls out to us with action. It is either answered by actions or it goes away. And so that's the reality. If you don't act upon this knowledge that you have learned, then eventually, as the days go by, as the months go by, as the years go by, you're going to forget it. And you know, this is the reality. Ask anyone who has experienced that, who has graduated from an Islamic institution, that you know, once they had graduated and moved on in life, if they did not implement that, uh, you know, that knowledge that they had learned, then it went away. And that's why the Salaf, they used to say that you know, it was, uh, it was the action behind the ahadith that we used to memorize. It was that that used to help us in our memorization. And so, as you know, Shaykh Abdul Rahim mentioned that. When you put this knowledge into action, it solidifies in your head. And that is the reality. Not only that, but implementing one's knowledge, you are giving the zakah of your knowledge. As one of the salaf, he said, O people of hadith, give the zakah of this hadith. Act upon five out of the 200 hadith that you have memorized. And so the real barakah of this knowledge is that you benefit from it, your, your, yourself, first and foremost, and then after that, you move on to teaching it to others, and this is the last piece of advice that I wanted to share, is to teach what you have learned. And so, if you want to see those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them in their knowledge, then look at those who do not get tired in spreading that knowledge, and in spreading the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who constantly, day in, day out, are out there spreading the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, spreading that beneficial knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them without a doubt. This is from the from the traces of the barakah of their knowledge. And so in conclusion, remember that today you hold a piece of paper that bears testimony to your knowledge. But on another day, you will be standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will ask you, what you did with that knowledge. As we know, the Prophet ﷺ said that the two feet of the son of Adam will not move on that day until he is asked about five things. And one of the things that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned was his knowledge and what he did with it. And so remember that this piece of paper that you will be given, although it may be valuable in the eyes of the people of this dunya, it is worth nothing in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if it does not produce true scholarship. And so true Islamic scholarship is to have knowledge, correct authentic knowledge, and then to act on, upon that knowledge, to have the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and act upon that knowledge, and then to impart that knowledge. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the upright in every single generation will carry this knowledge, rejecting the distortions of the extremists, the false claims of the liars, and the false interpretations of the ignorant. Yes, this knowledge that you have is, as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, uh, something that you have inherited. As he said, the scholars are the inheritors of the Prophets, and verily the Prophets did not inherit a dinar nor a dirham, rather they only inherit the knowledge. So whoever takes a hold of that has taken a hold of a great fortune. And so I conclude uh, once again congratulating each and every single one of you on what you have achieved. And bear in mind this huge responsibility that is on your shoulders. And remember that this is not the end of the path. Rather, you're going to continue to keep knowledge and continue to learn until the day that you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among his righteous uh, servants 
and to make us among those who are true scholars in the true sense of it, those who have authentic Islamic knowledge and act upon it and then go out there and impart it to the world. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik, ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta. أستغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. آمين يا رب. and جزاك الله خيرا الشيخ أحمد for your wonderful address to the students today. I I I O U extend the utmost appreciation and gratitude to the entire faculty and teaching assistants for your very diligent efforts to make I O U the best educational experience possible. It requires much dedication and sincerity to be able to not only educate, but also inspire an entire graduating class to go forth and apply this knowledge in their own lives, as well as spread it to those around them and bring great benefit to their respective communities, family members and friends, and everyone within their reach. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless each and every one of you and accept all of your efforts to you and sure uh, the students as well are grateful for all of the teachers that are on our staff, the TAs, the professors. We have a very amazing and esteemed faculty uh, to offer the knowledge at IOU and we invite all of you to continue your education with us. We would also, of course, not be able to make any of this possible without the great efforts of the entire IOU administration and staff. So we would like to extend our sincere appreciation and gratitude for all the long hours of highly professional work they do on a daily basis to make IOU what it is today and to really carry out the vision of quality education. We have a really wonderful team of competent and enthusiastic Muslims from all over the world making our workplace full of excitement and diverse ways of thinking that make it a daily pleasure to serve the Ummah in this noble mission. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless and reward all of you. And now for the eagerly anticipated moment, the awarding of the certificate, it is with so much pleasure and best wishes that Dr. Bilal will now begin awarding the graduates their certificates in order uh, please be patient. He will name off each and every graduate. Jazakallahu Karen. Uh, Dr. Bilal, please proceed with the virtual certificates. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope that I have successfully unmuted my mic. For our Bachelors of Arts in Islamic Studies, our students, Jamila Campbell, who resides in the U.S., is from the U.S., and that is, alhamdulillah, a great achievement as she has studied Arabic uh, from zero. Many of our students have had the opportunity to study uh, Arabic in the youth, etc., uh, from Muslim backgrounds, etc. But our sister, Jamila Campbell, is a convert to Islam, and her being the top of this batch, this is the batch of 2014, fall 2014. I must uh, commend her for her great achievement. And this also for you, Sister Yasmin, is a further encouragement to meet this challenge of Sister Jamila. Anyway, uh, number two is Rabia Sahna who resides in the UAE, but is from India. We have Mohammed Dukhani, who resides in Netherlands, but is from Morocco. Sanusi Rashida Kikelmo in Qatar, 
Farahia Mohammed in the UK, Marta Joanna Raznaden Ska in France, who is originally from Poland, Abdul Qadir Mohammed Suleiman in Norway, originally from Kenya, Feruz Khan Hassan in India, from India, Sayyid Samiullah Hashimi from Canada, residing in Canada, Adar Khan residing in the UK, from Pakistan, Smith, uh, Cheryl Dawn, it should be Cheryl Dawn Smith from Canada. I'd like to commend her too as amongst the hundred Muslims who has managed to get through this whole course. Uh, Anjum Nisar from India, Samia Ben Nazir from Canada, but originally from Algeria, Mahmoud Magdi, Canada, originally from Ghana, Ahmed Uthman Abu Al Sayyid Al Makawi from Egypt. Hassan Ali Didi from the Maldives, Abdul Mu'min Muhammad from Ghana, Asad Mahmoud from the UK, Abdul Rahim Ibn Kozart residing in Egypt but from the US, Muhammad Masih Hayari uh, from Afghanistan, MashaAllah, we commend you also in your efforts struggling in a time of great difficulty. MashaAllah, you managed to complete your studies in spite of all of the trials that are there in Afghanistan. We pray that Allah relieve your country, your part of our Ummah from the trials that it faced. Nafisa Abu Bakr from Nigeria. MashaAllah. That concludes the BAIS Fall 2014 batch. Moving on to our BAIS Spring 2015 class, we graduated in this in the fall, we are from the spring of 2015. Mohammed Bashir Jok from the UK, Nabila Mohammed Achacha Achaha from Pakistan, Akhtar. Ali Sayyid from India, Yasir Hussein from Norway, Asima Jabin from Saudi Arabia, Shagufta Mansouri from the US, Sanjida Sharmin from Bangladesh, Tabassum Muslih from Bangladesh, Zulekha Abdul Rahim from Malaysia, but residing in Malaysia, but originally from Nigeria. Adil Yunus from Ghana. Yama Mohammed from Germany. Fazl Ahmed from Sweden. Adnan Jumani from the US. Faizan Ahmed from Saudi Arabia, originally from Pakistan. Latifa Idris, Sweden, Mukhtar Tanai from Afghanistan, MashaAllah, there's two of you that have made it through. Raif Ridwan from Bangladesh. And that concludes the BAIS batch of spring 2015. <coughs> Uh, moving on, bachelor's, oh sorry, the bridge to the master's of arts in Islamic studies. We again have two batches, the fall of 2014 and the spring of 2015. These students, while graduating from the BMAIS program, 
the bridge program are expected to move on in the coming semester uh, if they haven't actually go from the 2014 batch for the fall they would have, would have already joined our master's program those from the spring of 2015 we also expect that they would have joined uh, or will be joining the master's program uh, of this year, 2014-2015, or sorry, 2015-2016. So the top of this batch is headed by Sister Bushra Nazneen from the United States, originally from India. And I commend you, Sister Bushra, for achieving the highest uh, marks of this batch, fall 2014. And uh, second is Nabila Tahir Awan, uh, based in Saudi Arabia, originally from Pakistan. We'd like to also commend you, along with Sister Mayra Mukhtar from Pakistan. I'd like to commend you also. Uh, I know you as a housewife with a handful of children, uh, school going, struggling, uh, professional also, working and studying at the same time. Mabruk, may Allah bless you all, be free. As well as the rest of the people of this batch, let us go back to them also. Junaid, Junaid ul Haq, Nu'aman ul Haq, Ansari uh, from India, Abdul Ghaniyu, uh, that's Barir from Ghana, um, <coughs> Nadir, Abu Zaina from Egypt, Fatima Talat from Saudi Arabia, originally from India, Suriya Jamal Kamil, Saudi Arabia, uh, Munira Binti Najib Talib, from Singapore, Asim Nazir from the UK, Uriya Hamzawi sorry, from Canada, originally from Algeria, Rada and Sayyid Muhammad Mahmoud from Egypt, Leila Afani from Jamaica. Ah, I have to. Say something for that, mashallah. Uh, you're the first Jamaican to graduate from our system. Don't have too many students. Of course, why I'm mentioning this, of course, for everybody else. I am a Jamaican also, so I can't uh, help but uh, say a special word for Leila Afani. Um, Haruna Sayedu from Nigeria. Uh, Muhammad Rehan, Rehanuddin Khan from Bangladesh. Mohammed uh, Jundi Alisho from Ethiopia, and I commend you for making it through your studies. I know in particular that Ethiopia has great difficulties with the internet. You know, studies there is extremely difficult. We're still struggling to find ways and means, alternative ways and means, for our students there in Ethiopia to be able to uh, consistently study and do their exams without the troubles and trials that many of them are facing. And among the things that we are looking at uh, is to give the full uh, material for, the, for each year, at the beginning of each year, we'll be giving it to the students of Ethiopia to spare them the trials of the internet there. Moving on, we have uh, Abdul Abdullah. I guess it should be Abdul Ghaffar uh, uh from based in Spain but originally from Morocco. Inas Adil Hamid Abdul Ati Rabi from. Uh, United Arab Emirates, uh, Debbie, hmm. struggling with this one here, please. <laughs> um, 
Let's see if my glasses can help me on this. Sorry. That's Dedi uh, Toro or Foro from Bunai, Dar es Salaam, originally from in Indonesia. And again, okay, the students from Indonesia are having a very difficult time. They're also um, not too many were able, in spite of the huge numbers of, of Indonesians, uh, to access Islamic Online University. As a result of which, we have launched this uh, in the last few months a project to translate our BAIS program into Indonesian, the Indonesian language. Moving on to Sharon Shahul Hamid, Saudi Arabia, originally from India. Uh, Isharat Sultana, Saudi Arabia, originally from Pakistan. Ahmed. Kuwaiti, Nadia from Algeria, Ahmed Saeed Noor, Canada, originally from Somalia. Alhamdulillah, I'd like to commend you also to uh, Somalia studying, from Somalia studying uh, the program in English, as uh, English is a bit difficult for many Somalis uh, due to the problems that. Uh, exists in the country with regards to the teaching of English. This is one of the reasons why we are quite focused in Somalia in these days to try to ensure that the standard of English is raised sufficiently to benefit the community as a better. Uh, moving on uh, to uh Sarai Brahim. Sorry, yeah. To Sana Ibrahim from Kuwait, originally from India. Uh, Amjad uh, Mahmoud Mohammed from the UK. Uh, Saeed Noor Toure, UAE, originally from Senegal. And also, I'd like to commend that uh, Senegalese normally speak French, so it's not surprising we don't have that many in spite of the uh, large numbers of Muslims there in Senegal. Uh, Manzoor Ahmed, Qatar, originally from India, and uh, commend Manzoor in particular, I'm based here in Qatar, uh, commend him for his efforts. Hijab Tariq Manzoor, Saudi Arabia, originally from Pakistan. Asim Afra, UK, originally uh, Britain also. Uh, Al Winston, uh, Omar Liu, Saudi Arabia, originally from the Philippines, and that also is worth also commendation. Uh, this is a new Muslim who has struggled his way through a course of study, and we pray that he will successfully carry this knowledge back uh, to the Philippines. Uh, Muhammad Akhtar Mahmoud from Canada. That completes the DMAIS. Uh, diploma for the fall of 2014. On to the BMAIS in the spring of 2015. Uh, note our uh, top three are uh, Birkis, uh, Naoshina from the UAE, originally from India, mashallah, uh, Farooq Altaf, also from India, and Uzma. And Wadi also from India. So the top three of the spring 2015 batch of BMAIS graduates are all from India. MashaAllah. I must uh, commend that many uh, Indians, alhamdulillah, have joined the, and embraced the Islamic Online University program and you know, are actively involved in further spreading uh, knowledge information. Uh, in the country, uh, we're dealing with uh, over 200 million uh, Muslims there. Um, moving on, uh, Harun Lone, Saudi Arabia, originally from Pakistan. Shahid yeah, Yasin, in the U.S., uh, who is American, 
Shahid Yaseen, she is also a convert Muslim. And in case I forgot to give a special commendation to Bill Case, now Sheena, for being the very top of her batch, I would just like to say that you have been blessed by Allah with that achievement. Kamil pointed out the opportunity to realize Islam, life, and <laughs> Continuing with the batch of spring 2015, Nick Muhammad Zayn Nick Yusuf from Malaysia. MashaAllah. That is also a new, unique uh, uh, graduate in quite a small number from Malaysia. We normally would have expected many more, but uh, due to issues of English in Malaysia, also many of our students you know, are not able to study there. This is why hopefully our translation of the uh, curriculum of our bachelor's in Islamic studies will benefit the Malaysian as well as the Indian. Idris Oseni from Nigeria, uh, Asif Saeed Ranjua, based in the UAE but originally from Pakistan, Muhammad Moinuddin, based in Saudi Arabia but originally from India, Rawan Sikani from Australia, Sahnima Sahir. Uh, from the UK, originally from Ireland, uh, Zayda Ibrahim uh, from sorry, yes, Zayda Ibrahim from Ireland, based in Ireland, but originally from Malaysia. Uh-huh. Um, Farida Mohammed from India, Salam. Jamal Sadiduddin from Jordan, Zainab Hanifa Abdul Qadir from Nigeria, Ruba Fatima from India, April Kaiser from US, April. April. April Kaiser, Kaiser, American. Again, we also have the number of Americans who have joined this program. I must mention that the largest number of students who have joined the IOU's programs are from the United States of America. Uh, Nasir Kola Yusuf from Australia. Musharraf, AKM Hussein from Bangladesh, Radia Chima from Pakistan, Ahmed Amin from Egypt, Rahmatu Koleri from Nigeria, and we must mention that the number of Nigerian students have increased very rapidly, and we hope that they will continue to increase. Uh, Taimur Ijlal, based in the UAE, but originally from Pakistan. Tasneem Ghulam Attar, UK. Mariam Mohammed, from Canada. And Babagani Mustafa, from Nigeria. Adiyemo Yusuf, Nigeria. And Al Hagi. Uh, it should be Al Haji, Kimo, Nduri from the Gambia. MashaAllah. And we ask Allah to bless the bridge to the masters. And we hope that if you're not already in the master program, we hope that you will be joining us shortly. Moving on to our first uh, certificate graduate in psychology, Mr. Zainab Haq 
from India. Uh, she achieved that uh, as the first. We also have from our Ijaza graduates, those who have received teaching certificates for teaching the Quran, having recited the complete Quran blindfolded, because that is our condition to give Ijaza. The Ijaza is not just given for recitation. Now that has become very common today. But we continue to maintain the original standards held by the predecessors of the Ummah, uh, where Ijaza is given for recitation from memory. So we have Abdullah Suleiman Ba from Sierra Leone. Mabruk, may Allah bless you for having achieved this great uh, standard. We have Hajir Haq from Canada, originally from Guyana. Also, MashaAllah, may Allah bless you for having achieved this and that the ijazah that you will receive from Islamic Online University will further your work with the Quran in teaching others, spreading its knowledge to the Ummah. Usman Yahya Yola from Nigeria, also achieving the ijazah certificate and Ariba Zubair with dual nationality from Britain and Pakistan. May Allah bless you also for this wonderful achievement of the Ijaza for the recitation of the Quran, complete from memory, accurately certified by specialists in this field. Barakallah fikum. Jazakallah Abdul Kharan, Dr. Bilal, for announcing all of the graduates and giving them their certificates today. I'm sure each and every one of them are very proud and feel so happy in their hearts to be able to have the unique opportunity to receive this achievement directly from you. And now we would like to share with you a video of the different testimonials of some of our graduates so that you can share with them a glimpse into their journey in the path of seeking knowledge. Islamic Online University, its administration, especially its founder uh, and leader, uh, Dr. Bilal Phillips, for uh, making it possible for one to increase one's Islamic knowledge to this level. The two essential factors, that's the pull factors, that the pull factors for IOU are the modest fees that they charge of the excellent instructors and TAs that they have and the support that they provide to the students, alhamdulillah. And given this knowledge uh, has been truly humbling. Uh, one realizes what little one knew before one started the course. It's really, really, really humbling. So since I finished, I've continued my service to the community by serving as an assistant imam here in London as well as uh, serving as uh, a madrasa, weekend madrasa teacher, teaching boys uh, from the age of 11 to 18, Quran and Islamic studies. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Praise be to Almighty Allah for giving me the opportunity to study at Islamic Online University. IOU has really benefited me and a lot of Muslims. It provides a platform for many people to seek the correct Islamic knowledge. Alhamdulillah. I appreciate the effort of our mentor, the founder and chancellor of this great university, Dr. Abu Amina Bilal Phillips. Happy of love. May Almighty Allah protect him and reward him with paradise. Now my sincere advice to all of us who are graduating today is to be patient, remain steadfast, and to fear Allah. At that point in time, I decided to enroll for the BMAIS, the Bridge to MAIS program. 
the admissions were uh, about to start because it was September 2013. Alhamdulillah, I enrolled about a week after the enrollment started and by the grace of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I completed uh, successfully my bachelor's and uh, my bridge to MAIS program Alhamdulillah and at the moment I am enrolled into the MAIS program at the IOU. The love that I gained for the for the uh, for the Islamic knowledge to learn the Islamic knowledge uh, is much more than what I had around one and a half years back. And I am thankful to the Islamic Online University for coming up with such a course, especially to Dr. Bilal Felix Fizahullah, that he came up with such a wonderful idea that a student, a person can avail the Islamic, authentic Islamic knowledge right from the comfort of his home, no need to go anywhere, he can do his office job at the same time, he can study this authentic Islamic knowledge from the comfort of his home. My love for the Islamic studies, uh, especially the Arabic grammar, uh, it uh, evolved to such an extent that within one year of starting studying at the IOU, I wrote my own book on the Arabic Nahaf, Arabic grammar, Alhamdulillah. Due to some reasons it could not be published, but I used the same book to teach my students. At the moment I have around eight students from across the globe. Few of the students are from the local city who come to me to, uh, to study the Arabic grammar and a couple of them are from uh, overseas whom I teach over the sky. At the same time, I, my love for Arabic grammar uh, caused me to accept the responsibility of facilitating the Arabic courses on the diploma section and Alhamdulillah, a few days back, I accepted the responsibility of being the level head of all the Arabic courses at the IU, IU diploma section. My learning experience at the Islamic Online University has been nothing less than beneficial, Alhamdulillah. Uh, I was given the opportunity to learn about my deen anywhere and anytime. Uh, and this ease did not make me any less committed to my studies either because the deadlines that were set for tests, exams and assignment submissions all helped me in staying committed. Uh, the constant support that I had received from tutorial assistants and I must add senior students and their notes really made my study process a lot easier than it would have been otherwise. Uh, I owe you not only made me a better Muslim but a better human as well. The fiqh and dawah subjects that were offered helped me in developing my tolerance towards others who would have shared different opinions than I. The Arabic and Tafsir courses helped me understand the Quran better and the Sirah courses helped me understand my beloved Prophet better. I am very grateful to IOU and its team for imparting authentic Islamic knowledge to me and to thousands of others all across the globe. And I can safely say that I am a witness to the Islamic Online University living up to its motto, changing the nation through education. Before IOU, all the universities we know are the secular universities, which did not take much importance and did not even care about the rulings of Islam in their affairs. I attended IOU with lots of students, over 200 students, male and female, but you, I, I could hardly notice even the faces of the females or, the, or, or, or my fellow males in the class. And this was advantageous. And our sisters were able to keep their modesty. But that is not the case with our secular institutions here. And Alhamdulillah, I went through my four-year course as a scholarship student. And with a scholarship student, I was um, as per the rules of the scholarship, I had to pass every semester in order to continue with my scholarship in the next semester. And Alhamdulillah, Allah took me through this journey, which was not an easy journey, but in the end, I was able to go through it well. I graduated successfully, inshallah. For me, IOU is a revolutionary step by Dr. Bilal Phillips. SubhanAllah, there is great effort behind this achievement. May Allah accept it from them. For me personally, IOU helped me rid out cultural thoughts and prioritize Allah's laws. It helped me build my confidence in Islam. It helped me be a better Muslim each day. We are uh, through IOU. We are connected to so many from all around the world, all ready in the path of Allah, being each other's friends, supporting each other, and encouraging each other. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the last ayah of Surah Ali Imran, Ya yuhallibina amanu sbilu wa sabilu wa rabitu wa taqullaha la'allakum tuhihun O you who believe, have patience, endure patiently, be well stationed, and have taqwa of Allah, you will be among those who are successful, among those who are muflihun. And part of being muflihun is in understanding that sometimes we will not see the results in this dunya. You know, and part of the Islamic online university experience was learning this fact that you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards us not only for our results but also for our efforts. It's more about our efforts than our results. Um, to give you an idea of what happened to me at Islamic Online University, I started off, uh, I had a period of my life where I lost faith around 2007-2008. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided me back to Islam. And from the period of 2008 to 2011, I was all over the place. I was, you know, reading an article here, doing maybe a small course there, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it was, it was not well grounded. I was reading sometimes unimportant stuff, whereas I did not know much about many of the important things. In 2011, I decided to enroll into the Islamic Online University's bachelor's program. The advantage of the IOU was that it was so well structured. There's exams, there's assignments, there's a set flow. You start off with a more basic subject, you move on to the more uh, in-depth kind of subjects, and it gets better and better as you go through uh, the years and come towards the end. Another thing also to encourage anyone who is looking to give up, I am a medical student in my fourth year of medicine, uh, just about a year uh, and a few months from becoming a doctor, inshallah. I did what was probably one of the most difficult subjects in regular university or secular sciences along with the bachelor's in Islamic studies and it was possible it is possible to do the book Alhamdulillah I have three graduate studies from University of Dhaka Asian Institute of Technology Thailand and University of Toronto Canada I have attended two convocations physically and today I am attending IOEO online convocation IOU gives proper respect, honor, and importance to all four Imams and other Islamic scholars. It follows no mazhab blindly, but the real Islam. I believe it is a balanced and correct approach that would one day lead to the actual unification of the Muslim Ummah. At the same time, IOU doesn't, doesn't feel shy to speak the truth. Actually, the quest of uh, gaining uh, the knowledge of Deen had been knocking up uh, the door for quite some time for me. However, there used to be certain questions which used to pop up whenever I used to think over it. So the questions were like, uh, whether the knowledge which I would be gaining, would it be authentic? Whether I would be able to continue my job? whether I would be able to get out some time for my kids and family? What if I had to travel to another city or country during this uh, time? How will I cover up the initial bachelor level knowledge uh, to get up to the master's level path? So Alhamdulillah, one day I saw a post from uh, Dr. Bilal Phillips, Hafidahullah, from his Facebook account introducing this BMAS program which was a bridge to the master's program but subhanallah this is this was what I was looking for for quite some time and all the popping questions which I mentioned previously were addressed by this program alhamdulillah so tawakkaltu ala Allah and I started the journey subhanallah these three semesters uh, ended up in a fast pace it was a well-organized coursework, having two uh, courses each for Aqeedah, which is an integral part of our deen, Sirah, which took us back to the days of Nabi Yuna Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and of course, Hadith and Tafsir. There were three courses for Arabic and five courses for Fiqh. The admirable part of Fiqh was that it was more of a comparative fit which included all major schools of thought.
Jazakallahu Karen for those amazing journeys. I apologize for the statement in advance of the video finishing. There seems to be some difference in the speeds between the countries on how quickly the video finishes. Now we would like to share with you uh, Dr. Bilal's personal appeal to join the Islamic Online University Alumni Association. And we can't emphasize to you the importance of this association and keeping in touch with IOU, serving IOU, and trying to volunteer as much as you can according to your capacity in your local area on sharing IOU with others and assisting the national reps and uh, student committees in your locality. And we would like to share this with you now. So please go ahead and start the video. Sister Yasmin, you have basically said everything that I was supposed to say. Uh, and uh, you've made all the main points that needed to be made. However, I just want to add, uh, you know, in addition to the issue of uh, being alumni of the Islamic Online University, that this is the living aspect of your studies. This is you coming together with other students from other parts of the Muslim world, fulfilling that experience, the Hajj experience of universality of Islam, coming together as one, that this knowledge should bring us together, to work together, regardless of our background, to do something for Islam. It is the zakah of our knowledge. We took, we received, we gathered, we, we benefited, and we need to give back. It is time to give back. By being a part of the Alumni Association of the Islamic Online University, you fulfill the right of knowledge upon you. At least, this is an aspect of it, not to say it is the complete fulfillment, you don't have to do anything else, no. But it is an aspect, an aspect which involves working with fellow graduates like yourself. If this knowledge was real, if you truly benefited, then you should now be prepared to work together to be one, work as one body. This knowledge is supposed to unify us, to remove the differences that normally split up the Ummah, split up the scholars or the students. Having gone through this complete set of studies, which is, as was mentioned by one of the graduating students, free from the excesses and the extreme partisanship of blindly following any school of thought, but following the way of the early scholars, who sought to follow the way of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We follow them all. We learn from them. We studied together, and having graduated together, it is now time for us to continue to work together. As Sheikh Abdul Rahim mentioned earlier, this is a beginning. This is not the end. It is the beginning, a new beginning. When you started your studies here in the Islamic Online University, that was a new beginning. And now that you have graduated, you have a new beginning from the perspective of applying the knowledge that you have, that you've gained, as well as through the Alumni Association that you would work together. You would support each other, like that structure which the Prophet ﷺ spoke of, each block supporting the other. Like the teeth of a comb, like one body working together. 
So we strongly recommend and strongly encourage that you continue to be a part of the IOU through the alumni body. And in this body, it is for you to chart your own course. We will not define for you what you need to do in this course, in this association. We won't define. We may try to help, guide, support, suggest. But it is yours. Take ownership of it. The Alumni Association is yours. It is the IOU wing, the IOU segment, which belongs to its graduates. Take ownership of it. It was created for you. To help you and the other graduates build and ex establish ways and means of working together in spite of the fact that we are living all over the world, from America to the Philippines, from the UK to South Africa. We are from all over the world, yet we can work together with the knowledge that we have been blessed with. To impact on the Ummah. So I ask you, and I ask those who came before you, who were also encouraged to join the Alumni Association, perhaps not as strongly as we're stressing it this time around, we ask you to join. Be a part. Give your zakat. May Allah bless you and guide you and give you success in every step that you take from here on words in your life. Barakallah feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. For this wonderful invitation to keep connected with Islamic Online University, as a national representative, I definitely ask Every one of you that graduated from the United States to please contact the info desk. We desperately need assistance over here in many of the promotions that we do and the establishment of student committees, and we would love to have your participation after your graduation. Now we would like to invite Bill Keith, now Sheena, our valedictorian, someone who has achieved a tremendous achievement, and we would love to hear her address us today. Uh, Sister Bill Keys is an Indian national and currently resides in Dubai. She enjoys teaching Islamic studies to children and also sharing Islamic knowledge with sisters at El Manar uh, in terms of Islamic studies and other subjects that she offers on the weekend. Since she's busy through the week studying with us, we do appreciate your studies with us and we ask you to now address the student body. Jazakallahu khairan for all your efforts, Sister Bill Keith. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Alhamdulillah. All praise be to Allah and peace and blessings be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all those who followed the path of righteousness until the last day. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlul uqtadam min lisani before I begin my speech, I would like to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing me with the knowledge of our religion through Islamic Online University. I would also like to thank Dr. Bilal Phillips for making it possible for women all over the globe to study about Islam by sitting in their house and pursue their studies at their own pace and convenience. My heartfelt thanks to the teachers who imparted the authentic knowledge to me and I also thank my family members and friends who supported and encouraged me throughout the course. 
Before I stepped into Islamic online university, I used to constantly ask Allah to guide me to the straight path and bestow upon me the beneficial knowledge that is rewarding both in this world and hereafter. As soon as I came to know about IOU, I registered my name for the course Bridge to Masters in Islamic Studies. Alhamdulillah, with the help of Allah, the registration and the processing of the documents went out smoothly and quickly. No sooner I joined this course, I started listening to the lessons. The lesson instructors made the course so interesting that my love for the course increased day by day. Every day of this course was filled with eagerness to know more and more about our religion and put them into practice. As a student, we have to work hard to gain this knowledge. There is no gain without pain and after every difficulty comes ease. Being a student of IOU is not an easy task. We have to be committed as well as work hard to complete our course. There were times when I found it quite difficult to study and do my household chores and look after my family. But I never lost, I, but I never lost hope. I used the greatest weapon for difficulty and hardship. That is the dua taught by our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah made my learning easy. My husband always encouraged me when I found it hard to complete my module test and submit my assignments. He used to cheer me up by telling that I am privileged to gain this knowledge and every time in, gain, in gaining this knowledge for sake of Allah is rewarding. During the weekends, when all used to have fun, I used to attend live sessions and do the community service. I used to feel sad and left out alone. I often remind myself of the hadith reported by Mu'adhiyah and that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said when Allah wished good for someone, he bestows upon him the understanding of deen. This hadith used to encourage me to sacrifice my leisure time and keep going with my studies and volunteer in teaching others about our religion. Being a student of IOU gave me confidence to make dawah. It helped me in strengthening the claim that Islam is the only true religion chosen by Allah for the whole mankind. It taught me how to manage time and utilize it in a very useful way. I would like to end up my speech by remembering myself and all the students present here that success comes with hard work. As we are privileged to acquire this knowledge, we also have the great responsibility to convey this knowledge of Islam to others. Let our life's motto be learn, practice and preach. May Allah help us to continue our journey of acquiring Islamic knowledge and help us put into practice what we have learned and convey the message of Islam to others. Ameen. Jazakallah who here and Sister Bill Keith, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and grant you the tawfiq to continue to serve this deen and share the knowledge that you've learned with IOU in many different places. And now we would like to offer a special gift for our top students. As you know from the past graduation ceremony, we at IOU wanted to express our sincere appreciation to the students and our admiration for their achievements by offering a special gift. So for the top student in every program, we would like to offer today one free semester of our master's program as an incentive and encouragement to please continue on the path of seeking knowledge with IOU. And those recipients today are going to be Jamila Campbell from the United States, Mohammed Bashir Joaf from the United Kingdom, Bushra Nazneen Nazne, Nazne from the United States, and Bill Keith Nelshina. We look forward to seeing all of you in our master's program and eventually graduates from our master's degree. And I owe you would like to sincerely thank Every single person for attending today, especially Dr. Bilal, Sheikh Green, Sheikh Ahmed, our student, graduates, and special guests. We look forward to seeing you again, and we also look forward to seeing you enrolling in more of our programs and staying connected to our alumni association and attending our live webinars and all of the many beneficial programs that Islamic Online University offers. Jazakallahu Karen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.